In this video, we're going to be talking about Devon Achan. I know I released a Dynasty running back video not too long ago, and I had some comments pop on there like, where is Achan? We don't know where he is in the ranking because he wasn't in my top 12. Well, this video is going to help break us down why I don't have him in the top 12 and what are my thoughts on Devon Achan. Now, let's just look at all the game logs that we have here for 2023 and we can see that there is a three game span that really sticks out like a sore thumb let's go ahead and break those down for you real quick in week three a chan had 18 carries for 203 yards which came out to 11.3 yards per carry if you're in a you know just a box score type watcher this looks amazing right but let's just go ahead and break down that performance in itself in the first half of the game, A-Chan had nine carries for 71 yards, which included a big 26-yard run. This came out to a respectable 7.8 yards per carry. Now, in the second half, A-Chan had two more burst plays of 40 yards and a 67-yard run. This is my worry with A-Chan. Most of his yards either come from a broken play by the defense or in a garbage time situation such as this 67-yard monster of a run. The game was 20-63 in the fourth quarter with all of the starters out of the game and boom, a massive run. If you take those three burst carries away from A-Chan, that would be 133 yards from just those three plays. This leaves A-Chan with 15 carries for 70 yards, which gives him a 4.7 yards per carry. Just for some context, a 4.7 yards per carry average, you know, really lands you around 15th in the NFL. Now, I do like A-Chan, and I do like his running back ability. He just, he's got a nice boom or bust type of potential. My problem was, is that his value right now is through the roof, and I don't like his ADP. His overall ADP is 18th. This is absolutely absurd to me. For a player, mind you, who only had four 100-yard rushing games out of the 12 in 2023, and the only way he surpassed 100 yards was with at least one burst play of 45 yards or more. Six of those 12 games he played, we saw him under 50 yards rushing. To add more salt to the wound, those games where he had under 50 yards rushing, there's games where he had nine carries or less. I mean, he was a complete afterthought in those games. You mean to tell me you are willing to pay or take a player in the second round of your drafts, whether it be a dynasty startup, a redraft league, or even simply trying to trade this guy in dynasty and having to give up the house for a 33% chance that he's gonna have a good game for you? 18th overall, that just means that you have him ranked around better players such as Jonathan Taylor, Drake London, Brandon Ayuk, and Nico Collins. If you want to break it down with just running backs, he would be the eighth running back off the board according to the ADP right now. That means you would have to take players like Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, Josh Jacobs, and Derrick Henry above A-Chain. Right Now, while you can say that A-Chain would be a better asset than Henry in Dynasty, I would say, are you sure? I mean, I mean, A Chain isn't a bell cow back, right? He's a five foot nine running back who backs up Raheem Mostert, who gets on average a handful of carries a game and once in a while breaks a long runoff, and then that way he gives you that good game. Look, there's no hate with A Chain, right? I just can't have him very high into my rankings, right? He's just way too volatile for me. It's kind of like if you're investing in stocks and you want to dip a little bit into, you know, some cryptocurrency. Yeah, that's way too volatile for me. So I'm just wanting to stay a little bit safe and I don't want to have A-Chain in my top 12 when he's consistently not giving you top 12 type of numbers. Now in week five against the New York Giants, A-Chain had 11 carries for 151 yards, which came out to 13.7 yards per carry. These stats look amazing until you really start to break it down. In this game, A-Chain had yet again two burst runs of 24 yards and 76 yards. Do you see the trend here? A-Chain needs to have those breakaway runs to be fantasy relevant, and I hate having to rely on that. If you take away those runs, which totaled 100 yards, you would be left with nine carries for 51 yards, which is a 5.7 yards per carry average. I know y'all hear me preaching about A-Chain and these yards per carry averages, but let me go ahead and break that section down for you guys a little bit further. 
If we look at the entire game log for A-Chain in 2023, and we just focus on the average yards per carry, we see that he averaged an amazing 7.8 yards per carry in 2023, which led him to be the first in the NFL with that 7.8. With having the best yards per carry, you would probably expect him to be the league leader in yards considering everyone and their grandma has him ranked so high in their rankings, right? I mean, he should be very, very involved into this offense. We ended up with a poop stain of 800 yards rushing, which ranked 26th in the NFL last season. Now, if we just simply take away the longest run from each game last season, that would give you an average rushing yards per game that kind of looks like this. This would average out for the entire season to 5.2 yards per carry, which would rank 7th in the NFL, along with 474 yards, and that would have landed him at 43rd in the NFL. Now let's take another look at the game logs and dive a little bit deeper into his game involvement. You know, I'm talking about the amount of times he actually carried the ball. If you average out his carries, he carried the ball 103 times, which averages out to about nine carries a game. That puts him at 42nd in average rushing attempts per game in the NFL. Now, as you can see, as I kind of broke down a little bit for you for this entire video, Devin A. Chain, you know, I like him. I, I like what he's able to produce and I like what he's able to do overall. My my problem with him is, is just his value is skyrocketing like right now. People are seeing him break away these long, you know, 70 plus yard runs, these huge things, but we have to kind of look at this in retrospect. If you started A-Chan almost every single game that he played last season, more times than not, you were disappointed with the outcome. Now, don't get me wrong, whenever he's booming, you're very excited that you have him in the lineup, but are you willing to pay either a high, you know, if you're in a startup dynasty, you're willing to pay a high, you know, second round pick or such for a player like that. If you're in a dynasty, are you willing to trade a lot of your assets to get a young running back like HM? Or if you're in a redraft league, do you want to take a second round pick on a running back who's going to be extremely volatile when you could have had somebody like maybe a Derrick Henry in redraft or maybe Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, some of these running backs that can, you know, they're proven to be the workhorse for their team, the number one guy right? If you're taking someone with as the 18th overall player anywhere, right? You, you, you want him to be productive week in and week out. And I don't think a -chan can give you that situation, but I hope it kind of gives you a little bit of insight on why I didn't have a -chan in my top 12. I wanted to give a little explanation for that. Guys, hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. We're cruising right along to 800 subscribers and hit the thumbs up for me. It really helps out with these algorithms. Leave a comment down below. Do you guys agree with my assessment of A-Chan and why I didn't have him in my top 12? If not, give me your reason why. Let's just, let's just be a little bit respectful here and go back and forth. I'll have a conversation with you guys. I have no problem with that, but I also like to, uh, to hit you guys up if you don't want to be a troll anyway, I'm still going to comment back to you, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. We'll see you guys next time.